Hey there, America. I'm Leslie Marshall. Welcome or welcome back to the only true democracy in talk radio of, for, and by you, the people. We're live nationwide. We are streaming live on the World Wide Web at lesliemarshallshow.com. Check it out. And our commercial-free podcast available where you can support the show, become a member, and get those podcasts via subscription at lesliemarshallshow.com forward slash members. In this hour, I want to talk about something that um, is near and dear to my heart, and it's unfortunately very true. And that is the growth and the growing girth of America. Our guest is Dr. Will Aguila. He is a board-certified general surgeon that specializes in bariatric surgery. He's also a contributor and obesity expert for MD News, an award-winning medical magazine. He received his medical degree from the University of Miami. So did my husband, by the way, Dr. Aguila. And he completed his surgical residency at the University of South Florida, went on to practice in general surgery in Tampa for 11 years. Founder of Weight Success Center, a surgical weight loss practice in Tampa. He struggled with his own weight problems, and after winning his personal battle of the bulge, he became dedicated to helping others, obese or not, understand the cycle of obesity and how to break it. Dr. Aguila, thank you for joining us tonight and welcome. It's my pleasure, Leslie. Um, why is America, I got to tell you honestly, I, I'm, my best friend lives in London and I try to go overseas over the pond, as they say, once a year. And, and if I can, you know, finances or frequent flyer miles allowing, I never ever have to wonder where the flights to the U.S. are. I just have to look at the people. They're fat. The backs of them are the double wides, okay? Why is America getting bigger, Dr. Aguila? Well, that is very true. Uh, the, these numbers are very concerning, and the, the truth of the matter is that uh, back about 2009, there were only nine states that were over 30%. Now it's 12 states, so it's even higher. Be, before I answer that question, I, I would like your, your listeners to refer to um, a website called uh, the uh, obesitytrends.com. It's from the CDC. And the reason I say that is because you can see an animation that they have on there all the way back from 1985 showing the, the, all the states and the, uh, the obesity per state per year all the way up to the present. And it, it is just shocking. It's shocking how the states turn from white, where there were, where there were, there were hardly anybody, uh, any obese reports, 15% all the way up to 30% now. And it's a serious problem. Uh, it, it has uh, a lot, there are lots of reasons why it happens. Can you name some of the reasons? Well, here's a scenario that I think is happening. Uh, what happens is we've developed a long association with food, a, a very loving association with food in this country. We got to the point where food is no longer for nutrition. It's actually to treat our emotions. We eat when we're happy. We eat when we're sad. We eat when we're stressed. We see it on the, in TV. We see it in the movies when somebody's been dumped. They eat a whole bucket of ice cream. And then what we have is the opportunity. We have fast food and available in large quantities, very cheap, everywhere, easily accessible. And, 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 and I think that there is another issue at play here, uh, and that is that since we're making that, uh, that connection between uh, our, our emotions and food, we're, we're learning how to medicate ourselves to treat our anxiety and depression. What I found, and this is the reason I, I wrote Why I Don't Lose Weight, is that that connection between anxiety and depression and food creates a lot of guilt when we realize that we're gaining weight, when we really realize uh, that our stresses are getting worse. And with that guilt, more anxiety comes in, more depression, more overeating, and we're in the cycle. And then it becomes a very, very difficult cycle to break. But it is breakable. And I think that I could, wrote about it, this is so, because it happened to me. So basically we're eating more. But the re there's a reason we're eating more. Does portion size weigh into it? Because certainly if you've traveled abroad, which I've been blessed to do, our portions are much larger. Let me just give you an example. In the United States, a Big Mac has like 2,000 calories, something like that. In Copenhagen, it has 400. So it's got to be what they're using to cook the Big Mac what the condiments are they're putting on, the size of them, et cetera, because it's the exact same restaurant, but the food comes from two different countries. I mean, heck, Italians eat pasta day in and day out, sometimes twice a day, and, you know, most of them are, are, are not obese. Um, so does portion size weigh into it? Well, that has something to do with it, and they also don't have fast food restaurants in every corner. And also when they do create, uh, make pasta over there, they don't always use eggs, and they use uh, uh, they use. They don't use processed flour also for everyday pasta. They but do they, don't, they, don't, locations. they don't have fast food on every corner, but they have food everywhere. Right, but they don't use it for, to medicate their emotions, and that's what we see in the United States all the time. 
Why, why, do, why does the United States do that and not other countries, in your opinion, doctor? Because, again, because we have that, that we, we are treating our overstressed lives here and our depression or anxiety with, with food that's readily available, fast food in large quantities everywhere. And now, I understand that, have, but why well, no, do we explain. do that versus let, other people? Why do we, we're human? And these fast foods have a lot of, of, of different uh, substances in them, uh, including fat, including salt, sugars, that we crave because these are the ones that make us feel better. This is exactly what happened to me when I was a binge eater. I was a binge eater for many, many years. And I know that these substances are crave. Nobody, nobody craves a, a baked chicken. Uh, you know, you crave the substances in these fast foods, the cheese, the, the gooey sauces, and all this stuff. And that is what, what medicates you, makes you feel better. And as long as we, we, we continue to uh, learn that from even when we're very young, we learn to make that association between food and emotion, we're going to carry that into adulthood, and that's what's been happening. And we see that everywhere. We're exposed to it all the time.